arriving in Taiwan on a private trip. At least, that's the official explanation. A delegation from the United States, a former Deputy Secretary of State and a former National Security Advisor. Their arrival less than 24 hours after the election of Taiwan's new president doesn't appear to be a coincidence. First on the agenda, a meeting with outgoing President Tsai Ing-wen. She's been a reliable ally during her two terms, despite provocation from China. We look forward to continuity in the relationship between Taiwan and the United States under the new administration, and for common efforts to preserve cross-strait peace and stability. And a warm handshake from the president-elect. The relationship with the U.S. will be vital during his term in power. Thank you to the U.S. side for its long-standing, firm and unwavering support for Taiwan. I believe that Taiwan-U.S. relations, under the joint efforts of both sides, will continue to move forward. Tensions have been rising in the Taiwan Straits in recent years, prompting military exercises on both sides. With major conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East ongoing, Washington, D.C. doesn't need any more problems. Quietly, they're likely to press President-elect Lai to curb his more confrontational instincts. Under the table, I think there is a main purpose of its visit, that is preventive diplomacy. The U.S. would like to prevent the newly elected William Lai to be more assertive or provocative. The buzzword around here for the last few days has been continuity maintaining the status quo. That's what Taiwan's new president says he wants, and the United States. But it's not yet clear if China is listening. Tony Chang, Al Jazeera, Taipei. Well, Taiwan has lost one of its remaining diplomatic allies two days after it elected a new president. The Pacific island of Nauru says it will not recognize the government in Taipei. It's switching ties to China, Taiwan accuses Beijing of pressuring its allies. And China claims Taiwan as its territory, a position Taiwan rejects. Now, Brian Hugh is the founder and editor of New Bloom magazine, an online publication that focuses on Taiwan and the Asia Pacific. He joins us now from Taipei. Thanks very much for being with us. So first of all, what do you make of this decision uh, by the government in Nauru, and in particular, the timing of it uh, right after the election of the, of the new president in Taiwan. Yeah, that's right. So the timing is a mere two days after the election. And so it's a sign of how China is registering displeasure with Taiwan for exercising its democracy. Taiwan has been engaged in this struggle with China regarding its diplomatic allies for some time. <laughs> China often will seek to poach diplomatic allies of Taiwan if there's a DPP presidential administration. And with an incoming presidential administration that is also of the DPP, China is quick to register displeasure in this way, expected some flexing muscle would occur, and this is the way it has chosen to do so. And uh, how much of a, of a, I mean, what, let's, let's talk about Nauru, first of all. What does this mean um, for Nauru? It's a small island, um, but it has a relationship with Taiwan. But obviously, China has a lot more money. Absolutely. And so Nauru has a population, depending on some census counts, of up to 10,000, around 10,000, a bit more, a bit less sometimes. But it's a very small country. And then particularly if you do emphasize diplomatic relations with Taiwan rather than that of China, recognizing the Republic of China, the official name by which Taiwan is known, rather than the People's Republic of China, you're losing out on the Chinese market. And you may face attempts by China to pressure you. And so it does make sense as to why Nauru has decided to switch here. Uh, Taiwan cannot outbid China in terms of its incentives that it offers to Nauru. But the timing, of course, is after the election. That is suspicious. And how much of a blow is this for Taiwan, then? A dwindling number um, of nations, small number to begin with, uh, of nations that recognized Taiwan. It's not a huge loss uh, because it is such a small country. And uh, Taiwan's unofficial relations with the U.S., for example, and other Western powers are of much more importance. Uh, but that's symbolic value. And it shows that China's attempts to intimidate Taiwan will continue. And it also gives the opposite KMT, the historically pro-China party in Taiwanese politics, the uh, political ammunition that it will use into Lai's new upcoming term. And so claiming that with the DPP administration, you will have continuing shrinking international space, this loss of diplomatic allies, and then framing this as the DPP's fault rather than that of Chinese pressure. Good to talk to you, uh, Brian Hugh. Thanks very much. Thank you.